Now there is a tool called the cold wire feeder, which helps you automate the wire feeding intake process. Now this uh, cold wire feeder uses something like a mix spool. So you have a 15 kg spool, a 5 kg spool, or a 1 kg spool that you can use. Uh, the wire is already wound in that uh, spool that is being fed through the uh, nozzle and it comes to your torch at the top. So this is semi-automatic wire feeding, increases your welding speed, reduces your stub end losses. Now you don't have to stop at the end of every one meter. You can keep feeding continuously for 15 kgs. And your wastage in 15 kgs is only the end eight meter uh, cut length, which will be left in your liner. This you can pre-feed or use it for manual welding as well. This simulates pulsing. It can simulate start stop or you say allows time for your wire on delay. So in TIG typically when you start TIG welding, you start, then you slowly rise your current through upslope to the peak current. Once the peak current is achieved and your pool becomes molten, you start feeding in the filler wire. So this delay can be preset as wire on delay. So every time you press the button, after the wire on delay, the wire will start feeding into the pool. Also, once you stop welding, the wire will retract itself behind, which means it will take away from the pool so that the wire doesn't get stuck in the molten pool. This reduces start stop <coughs> for the welder, which means you can have continuous welding and you will have less loss of um, time. So earlier the welder had to stop because the filler finished. Now the welder can continue till he feels a slight fatigue or tiredness and he can stop and then restart, which means you will have less number of start stops, less number of grinding, and you will save gas. Each time you start stop, you have to have pre-flow, post-flow of gas. Similarly, you have a tool called hot wire power source, which preheats this wire before going into the molten pool. Because you preheat the wire, the melting temperature gets down, and so in the same current, same speed, you will have more melting or more deposition rate. So lower heat input, increased deposition rate, and your wire gets preheated. Typically, this is your power source, tick power source, connected to a tick torch. This is your job workpiece. This is your arc. You would manually feed the wire here. If you're using a cold wire feeder through a pen or your torch, the wire will be fed through and would be entering into the pool here. Now, in a similar case, if you add the hot wire power source, it is connected to the tip of the pen and the wire end. Now, this resistance or the amount of stick out that is there here they forms a resistance through which the hot wire power source transmits power, and that is why the wire gets preheated. Right? I hope this logic is clear to all. Typically, if you are doing any manual welding, your currents are between 200 to 250 amperes in manual welding, which means if you are doing cold wire feeding, your deposition rates are about 10 to 12 grams per minute or say about half a kg to 600 grams an hour. Now the same thing if you move to hot wire in manual also you can look at about 20 to 25 grams per minute which is something like 1 kg per hour in hot wire. Now how does this look? If you see the pen, this is the pen which the operator holds in his hand. He holds it the same way that he holds your uh, uh, filler wire. So there is no change of skill. In one hand, he is holding the torch. In the other hand, he is holding the pen. And from the pen, the wire is being continuously fed. This configuration is easiest for the welders to learn and get used to the cold wire feeder and start producing faster, better. Then you also have the option of using cold wire feeder with the torch where the wire comes directly from here. You have adjustable angles and he can use one hand to do the welding directly. This is very popular with the mid, uh, European and Middle East uh, welders. In India, still people prefer the pen. We can use the hot wire in the same condition and the hot wire will be connected here just before the wire is being released into the pool. So this segment gets heated and fed into the pool. It's very easy to connect. So here you can see the welder is using the pen in one hand. The wire is being fed from it and he is welding directly onto the plate like he would weld a normal with a filler wire. But in this 300 mm length, he would have either used two to three filler wires and he would have to stop one, two times. Here, he does not need to do that. He continuously welds the whole length 
at one go. In this case, you are seeing our LX 100% duty cycle power source, pulse stick with the cold wire feeder, integrated with the torch, and the welder can weld directly with one hand, feeding the wire directly into the weld pool. It can be integrated with any of your existing power sources also, whether it is a European power source or a, or a old Indian power source, it, it works with any power source independent of it and very easy for the operators to integrate. Typical speed increments you can expect by using a cold wire feeder are something like 25 to 27% in terms of feed rate or deposition rate and productivity increment with a little bit of practice can go upwards of about 25 to 30%. 